I am Tom Sullivan, Chairman of the Board of Thomas Aquinas College Board of Governors. And every year we give one award, our Thomas Aquinas Medallion, to the person we consider the most deserving, and that person this year is Mother Teresa. And with the medal goes the inscription as follows. The governors of Thomas Aquinas College, on behalf of the college community, award to Mother Teresa the St. Thomas Aquinas Medallion. As a token of their respect and esteem, and to recognize and honor her for her extraordinary dedication to God and the Catholic Church, as demonstrated in her life and work, in her overwhelming love of the poorest of God's creatures, she has manifested the deepest meaning of the gospel and the life lived for Christ through Mary, and has brought that message through her words and action to a spiritually hungry world. Mother Teresa, in behalf of the college community and the Board of Governors of Thomas Aquinas College, I'm deeply honored to present, in the name of the college, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who by coming among us has graced this occasion in a very special way. Ladies and gentlemen, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. In this beautiful day, where our young people are looking forward to become carriers of God's love, let us ask Our Lady to give us her heart so beautiful, so pure, so immaculate, her heart so full of love and humility that we may be able to receive Jesus in the bread of life, love him as she loved him, and serve him in the distressing disguise of the poor. Uh, we read in the scripture that God loved the world so much that he gave his son as a proof of his love. And Jesus coming to Mary, the most beautiful of creatures, so pure, so holy, she, in accepting him in her life, immediately she went in haste to give him to others. And that haste today is very appropriate for you, for you too have received Jesus and have, have received with Jesus so many beautiful things from this college, from this. And now you go out, you also go in haste to give the joy of loving, the joy of sharing. For you have received not to keep, but to share. And what is there to share? What did Our Lady do? Then she came into Elizabeth's house. That little unborn child, he was already six months in his mother's womb. That little innocent, small, helpless child was the first one to recognize 
the presence of Christ. And he leaped with joy. Even Saint Joseph did not know that Mary had received Jesus. But this little one, so small, so innocent, so helpless, God used that little one to proclaim the greatness of his son, the presence of his son. And this, the joy of the presence of Jesus, you must be able to give wherever you go. But you cannot give what you don't have. That's why you need a pure heart. A pure heart that you will receive as a fruit of your prayer, as a fruit of your oneness with Christ. And a pure heart can seek God. And if you seek God, immediately, immediately you begin to love one another. That's all Jesus came on this earth to give us that good news. Love as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. How wonderful it is to think that we all, all have been created for that purpose. We have not come into this world just to be a number. They say that we have many numbers in India. But that is, we are not numbers. We are children of God. We have been created for a purpose, for greater things, to love and to be loved. And therefore, that good news God, Jesus came to give us. And that good news you must carry out. You must bring into the world where you are going to move in now. What good news? That God loves you and that you want to love others as he loves you. Tenderly, lovingly. And how do we know that God loves us? There is a very beautiful word in the scripture. But in the Isaiah where he says, I have called you by your name. You are mine. Water will not drown you. Fire will not burn you. I will give up nations for you. You are precious to me. I love you. And even if mother could forget her child, I will not forget you. I have curved you in the palm of my hand. How wonderful it is, the tenderness of God's love for us. And it is this that you have to carry out in the world of today. But with this expectation, your parents, your relations, your friends, even the whole world is expecting that you be that light. The light that Jesus said, I am the light that you must lead. I am the truth that you must speak. I am the joy that you must share. I am the life that you must live. I am the love that you must love. Go with that, the joy of loving. You must experience the joy of loving. And how do you experience If you feel that freedom. You need to be free to love. That means to have a clean heart. And this is my prayer for you that you become real carriers of God's love in tenderness and love. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to love. Even when suffering comes, humiliation comes, pain comes, success comes, joy comes, remember, you are precious to Him. He loves you. And this is something that today when we are get, go together to proclaim the joy of being loved and the joy of loving. We hear so many terrible things happening, but never lose heart. We always thank God, I can smile. At least you can smile, if nothing else. I never forget one day I met a, a lady who was dying of cancer. And I could see from the way she was struggling with a terrible pain. And I said to him, to her, I said, you know, 
This is but the kiss of Jesus, a sign that you have come so close to him on the cross that he can kiss you. And she joined her hands together and said, Mother Teresa, please tell Jesus to stop kissing me. <laughs> but this, this is the joy of suffering. This is the kiss of Jesus. Do not be afraid to share even that joy of suffering with him. Because he will never give us more suffering than we are able to bear. I have seen that again and again with our poor people. We deal with thousands of people. People who die of hunger, of disease, people who die of loneliness, of being unwanted, unloved. And I have never yet heard one of them complain or curse. Once I picked up a man from a street, from an open drain, and I took him to our home. And he, he did not shout, he did not blame anybody, just said, I've lived like an animal in the street, but I'm going to die like an angel, loved and cared. Two, three hours after, he died with a big smile on his face. That is God's tenderness and love that came to him through the hands of those young sisters. Now in our congregation, we have about 70 uh, young American sisters who have joined and who are completely so totally dedicated and doing that, taking care of the lepers, of the dying, of the crippled, of the unwanted, of the shuttings, and so on. And there's so much joy, that sharing joy. Because Jesus wants us to be happy. He wants us to give that, that joy, that my joy be with you. And we have no reason to be unhappy, because we are loved by God himself. Even in suffering, it's not a punishment, it's a gift of God. And so I think these days, when you are, after so many years, four full years, you have prepared, I hope you have learned to pray. And if you have learned to pray, that is your strength, that is your joy. And through this life of prayer, make sure the fruit of prayer is always the deepening of faith. And the fruit of faith is always love. And the fruit of love is action. We must put our love for Jesus in a living action. How do we do that? If we do it with Jesus, if we do it for Jesus, and if we do it to Jesus, then we know that we are with him. Because he has said so. This is not an act of faith to believe that I am doing it to Jesus. Jesus has said, whatever you do to the least of my brethren, to me. And also, the condition in our last day, when we come face to face with God, we are going to be judged by what we have been to him. And he says, I was hungry, you gave me to eat. I was naked and you clothed me. I was homeless and you did it to me. There's no imagination. No, maybe, just as we believe that two and two make four. We don't need to believe that. We know it is like that. So same when Jesus has said, you did it to me, that presence. And to be able to do that, we need the Eucharist. We need Jesus in the Holy Communion. We need the bread of life. That's why Jesus made himself bread of life, to satisfy our hunger for his love. And then he makes himself the hungry one so that we can satisfy his hunger for our love. A few months ago, I had to go to Delhi, and one of the ministers, who is top man, social works, and he said, Mother Teresa, you and we are doing same social work. 
But there is great difference between you and us. We do it for something and you do it to somebody. And this is for you young people. Remember, do it to somebody. That man, that woman, my brother, my sister, somebody. Jesus in this racing disguise. And how do we have to do that? Where does it begin, this love? At home. And how does it, this love begin? Family that prays together, stays together. And if you stay together, you will love one another as God loves each one of you, as Jesus wants us to love one another. Not in sadness, but in joy. To think that I can love God in my brother We must come to Do we know that? Maybe our poor are in our own family. Maybe we have somebody sick, somebody old, somebody feeling very restless, somebody feeling very lonely. Do we know that? Here in United States, our sisters are working. And surprising. There are not hungry people, maybe, though we are feeding a big number of people in New York, but still not so many in Washington and other places. It's not that hunger of Africa and Afri uh, hunger of, uh, of uh, India that uh, people sometimes die of hunger. Yeah. But a terrible hunger for love, the terrible loneliness, the terrible rejection, the terrible is this much greater hunger. Nakedness is not only for a piece of cloth, but nakedness is also that loss of that dignity, human dignity, the loss for what is beautiful, what is pure, what is chaste, what is virgin, loss. And homelessness is not only house made of bricks, homeless of being that people completely forgotten, rejected, left alone as if they are, they are nobody to nobody. I never forget one day I was walking down the street of London, and there I saw a man, uh, uh, the way he was sitting, the way he was looking, he looked the most rejected man that I've ever seen. So I went right near him and I took his hand, and shook his hand, and my hands are always very warm, except here, they're a little bit cold. <laughs> But I shook his hands, and then he said, Oh, after so long a time, I feel the warmth of a human hand. And his face was quite different. There was joy, there was sunshine in his eyes. There was, I can't tell you the change that came on that man's life just with that simple shaking of the hand, the warmth of my hand. This is where now you young people must go out with that, with the searching eyes. Go in search and find. Maybe in your family, maybe in next door neighbor, find. There are many people here in the States. To me, greatest poverty is that abortion, the fear of the child. The child must die. The child must be killed so that we don't have to feed one more child. We don't have to educate one more child. Terrible, terrible. Mother could murder her own child. Terrible. It's a sign of great poverty. And so, open your eyes to come to know. One evening, a man came to our house and said, there is a family with eight children that have not eaten for a long time. Do something for them. And I took some rice and went. And the mother took, I could see from the eyes of the children, real, God knows how long they had not eaten. But their eyes were simply shining with hunger. And big black lines under their eyes. 
And the mother went out with the rice. When she came back, I asked her, where did you go? And what did you do? And she said, they are hungry also. Next door neighbor, she knew they were hungry. I was not surprised that she gave, but I was very much surprised that she knew, because in a sorrow like that, in a suffering like that, very often we have no time to think of others. And yet this tremendous woman had the courage to love like that, great love. This is something that we have to learn from our poor people. They are very great people. One day, you don't know what is hunger. You have never experienced that. But one day, I picked up a child, six, seven years old, from the street. And I could see the pain of hunger in her face. So I gave her a piece of bread. And then I saw the child eating the bread crumb by crumb. I said, eat, eat the bread. And then she looked at me and said, I am afraid when the bread will be finished, I will be hungry again. See, that little one, so small, has already tasted the pain of suffering, pain of hunger. And this is what I want you, you who are going out into the world, <coughs> open your eyes. Many young people come to Calcutta to share in the work, many, from different universities, from different colleges. They come and spend two weeks, one month, according what they are able to make. And they, each one of them, they come, share their life of prayer with us. In our congregation, we have adoration every day. So for one in the evening. So they come, especially they want to work in the home for the dying. And they come with us. And they always say the same thing. At home, I saw, but I didn't look. You have taught me to see and to look. Now I go home, and I'm sure I will find the same. I will find people who need my tender love and care. All of them. A girl, a university girl who was in her final, final examination of PhD in Paris University, she came also before examination. She wanted to spend one month working with Mother Teresa in the home for the dying. And then, just one week before, she looks always very occupied and so on. But then, uh, one week before. One day she came to our house and she put her hands around me and she said, I found Jesus. I said, yes, where did you find him? And she said, I found him in the home for the dying. And I said to her, what did you do when you found him? What did you do with Jesus when you found him? And she said, I went to confession and Holy Communion after 15 years. Then I said to her, what else did you do with Jesus when you found him? And she said, I sent a telegram to my parents and told them I found Jesus. <laughs> so beautiful. See, she came, she saw, she looked, and she did. This is what you go out with that determination to give Jesus to the people. Like Mary. When Mary came into the home of Elizabeth, the little one lived with joy. Your presence should bring that in your own family first. The joy of that presence of Christ. The joy of purity. The joy of that real sharing. It's very beautiful that a young man 
loves a young woman, and a young woman loves a young man. Beautiful. That's beautiful creation of God. But make sure, make sure that when you that you love with a clean, with a pure heart, that you love with a virgin heart, and that on the day of your marriage, when God makes you one, but as in the scripture we read that they cleave together and they become one. On that day that you can give to each other a virgin heart, a virgin body, a virgin soul. This is the greatest gift you can give to each other. Just a few days before I came, I left Calcutta, a young man and a woman came to our house. And uh, just two days before they had got married. And they gave me a big amount of money to feed the people. Because we, we cook for 7,000 people in Calcutta every day. So these good young people, they gave me the money to feed the people. And I said, where did you get so much money? <laughs> and they said, you know, Mother, before, before, we marry, mar before our marriage, we decided that out of love for each other, we will not buy wedding clothes, we will not have wedding feast. We will give you the money. And I said, but why? Why did you do that? Because that is unheard of in India, especially in a Hindu family. Some marriage is something very important part of their lives. And they said, we wanted to give something very special to each other. We loved each other so tenderly that we wanted to give something special to each other. This is a love, a greater love. So my prayer for you is that you go in the world today with a virgin heart with a virgin love, and give that love to all you meet. Your presence should bring, lit a new light in the lives of the people. When our sisters went to Yemen in a Muslim country, completely Muslim, there's no church, no nothing there, and uh, the governor of that place wrote and said, the presence of the sisters has lit a new light in the lives of our people. This is something that you also go forward with the joy and keep that joy of loving Jesus in your hearts and share that joy with all you meet, especially with one another and your family. And through this love for each other, you will grow in holiness. Holiness is not the luxury of the few. It's a simple duty for you and for me. So let us grow in that holiness so that one day we be all one heart, full of heart, full of love in the heart of Jesus. And you also pray for us, for sisters and brothers. We have consecrated our lives to love Christ with undivided love and chastity through freedom of poverty, in total surrender, in obedience. And in our congregation, we take a fourth vow of giving wholehearted free service to the poorest of the poor. By this vow, we are specially bound to the people who are nothing and nobody, and also fully depend on divine providence and accept government grants, nor salaries, nor church maintenance. Just like the flowers of the field and the birds of the air depend on him fully. And he has been a wonderful father to us and to our poor people. We deal with thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And we have never had to say, I'm sorry, we don't have. It's been always, it's always been there. So you pray that we don't spoil God's work that it remains His work. And you help your children if God calls them to join in this, giving their lives to God, to priesthood or to a religious life. Be grateful to God for this great gift. For this is something very special because God 
is asking your child to belong to him totally and to be only all for him. So let us pray together for our poor people that God's love may be shown to them through each one of us. Make us worthy, Lord, to serve our fellow men throughout the world who live and die in poverty and hunger. Give them through our hands this day their daily bread and by our understanding love give peace and joy. <laughs>